<clears throat> okay, we're going to call it meeting to order. And before we start, we invite you to start the pledge. So, begin. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America. Do we have any changes to the agenda? We don't necessarily have changes. I just want to take a minute to remind everyone to mute their phones when they're not speaking. Um, and on the consent calendar, items 16, 17, and 18 only need to be passed if the budget is not adopted. Could you say that again, please? Yes. So for the consent calendar, items 16, 17, and 18 only need to be passed if the budget is not adopted. If it's not adopted. Correct. Okay. The one that needs to be adopted is number 12? It's 12, 13, and 14. Okay. Okay, we're going, any others? Change it. Uh, do we have a motion for the council for the approval of the agenda? Do we have a second? Second. Okay, well, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And I also vote aye. Our next item is awards, presentations, appointments, and proclamations. We have none. We have item. Somebody. Somewhere, it's really been almost not here. Can everyone hear me? I can hear you, but there's a lot of static or uh, yeah. back in the background. Yeah. It sounds like someone's at a restaurant or something or a party. Huh. We're going to do uh, citizens' comments. This section of the agenda allows members of the public to address the city council on this within the jurisdiction. Uh, members recognized by the mayor to come forward. I get stuff and use the comments or no to two, three minutes. In accordance with state meeting laws, no action will be taken by the city council this evening. And is there anyone, Mario, that would like to make any comments? There is Nathan Vosberg would like to make a comment. Okay. Nathan, go ahead when you're ready. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I want to open up uh, by letting the public know that uh, tonight the city council plans on voting on a budget that will put the city back into debt. This comes at a time when they have received Measure J monies of almost a million dollars. And in that budget, they have budgeted 755 k in expected cannabis revenue raising fees, which is actually more than we've ever received in revenue raising fees. Last time, I believe we uh, got 266000 uh, This is setting the city up for failure. It's also setting up an industry to take the fall for poor planning on by the council. Last meeting, Councilwoman Stoltz brought up cutting and the council voted to eliminate all elected and appointed stipends except their own. They even voted to illegally remove the treasurer at the advice from the city attorney stating it was only an ordinance change. Well, I knew that wasn't true. Now tonight, it's on the agenda to put in the item on to remove the treasurer position and to put that on the ballot like it should have been done last time. Um, I am pretty sure that each ballot item costs money regardless of its being a general extra or not. And so by stating it's a wash due to having to pay for the position that's being voted in by the people, I don't think that's forthcoming because it this election will allow someone to run for the treasurer's position because the position will not be eliminated until the people vote on it, which means you're going to be paying twice. You're going to be paying for the my opinion, you're going to be paying for that position to run and you're going to be paying to remove it, which I don't think people are going to vote for because people voted to put that on the ballot in the first place. 
Needless to say, uh, citizens of this town didn't trust the council and decided they wanted that the, to see that city treasurer position. And uh, that's why it's even there in the first place. At the last meeting, Councilman Stoltz stated she didn't think that the planning commission was needed. That, that's funny because many of them do more than most of you do. Sorry if that hurts your feelings, but that's the truth. The planning commission actually requires people to do work and make recommendations. They're another part of oversight between the public and the council. Yet council wants to take away their $50 per meeting stipend to save 6 k on the budget. They spend more than that on one member's health insurance. Let there be no doubt. This is being done because I turned in a grand jury report and have reported them for not following the guidelines stated in the code of conduct on how to run a meeting. Being involved in personnel issues and degrading the public, which is all stuff brought up at the last grand jury investigation that included two of the current council members, so there will be no surprise. The other reason is that my father is the city treasurer. Since they can't do anything to me, they're going to go after him. Very similar to how a certain uh, person, uh, member person went after Faith Christian. All this information, the grand jury report, the CPRA request will be released to the public closer to election time, specifically so that people don't forget the people that are running our city. Now, let me give you a breakdown of the extra savings, since I'm actually not against removing the treasurer's position. Uh, I think it's a great way to save money, but I think the council should continue on their path and they should remove their own insurance and their own stipends as well. That being said, the planning commissioners uh, total together get six uh, six thousand per year. The treasurer position would save us fifteen thousand four hundred, which totals twenty one four. The health cost uh, just for Mayor Lander is fourteen five. Just think about how much we've been paying that amount since he's been on council. There's another thirty six hundred that he gets in stipends, and the rest of the council gets. So that's eighteen thousand one hundred and ninety six. The public pays for just him. That's 8,538 for Councilwoman Stoltz to have insurance, plus the 3,000 takes that up to 12,138. So just these two members alone are costing the city $30,334. Council pay altogether costs the city around 18K. Health insurance and benefits for that equal about 41K per year in savings that we could save if we just cut their pay. And uh, well, they have to vote to cut their own pay. And if they would cut their own stipends over 10 years, that'd be half a million dollars almost. Just remember that coming to election time. Council is voting to remove oversight committees and elected officials' pays except for their own. Lastly, passing a budget that is 180 in the, in the hole is ridiculous. You have no COVID number expectations. This is just poor planning and not willing to make the decision to do what is right for the city. We fought hard to I get out of this debt. This has exceeded the three minutes. Thank you. you. This is not up to you. You're not the mayor. And here you guys go putting us back into debt. You added a million dollars with Measure J and hundreds of thousands with cannabis money, and you still can't balance a budget. This is ridiculous. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. This budget is on you. It's not on city staff. This is on you. And I want you to know that I will be doing everything in my power to make sure that you are voted out for this if these measures are, are passed and you're not being elected to the next term. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Mario? Um, just one other um, from Mr. James Bosberg um, in regards to consent calendar items four, eight, and nine. Uh, he says, in his opinion, these are all misguided and knee-jerk responses. Discontinuing pay for the Planning Commission will likely cause a quality reduction in people wanting to participate. The same would apply to the Treasurer's position as well. If, however, they want to continue on this path, then there is also lots of money being paid out to the city council members themselves, including health insurance. <clears throat> if the council is serious about addressing a shortfall, they should step forward and eliminate their own pay and benefits. And those are all the comments I have. Okay, thank you. Public hearings, we have three items. One is city council approval of resolution number 39 Six, eight, approving of a tentative subdivision map, general plan amendment, rezone, and certification of an initial study mitigated negative declaration for the property located at 150 South Hackman and further introduce and waive the first reading of ordinance number 842 rezoning said property from mixed use commercial to residential medium density. Sean? 
Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, tonight, the Council will uh, be considering a tentative subdivision map, uh, combined development application for the development of uh, five 5,000 square foot parcels for residential development at 150 Hackman. Um, the site's approximately 0.57 acres and contains three existing residential units, totaling about 2,910 square feet with 960 square feet of paved walkways and driveways. The proposed project would include the subdivision of the parcel into five 5,000 square foot parcels for future residential development. The proposed project would not include the development or redevelopment of the site at this time, and all existing on-site structures will remain until further development plans are submitted to the city through an administrative site plan review. Uh, the current general plan land use designation for this site is mixed use and the site is zoned mixed use. Uh, the proposed project requires approval of a general plan amendment for mixed use uh, to residential medium density and the subsequent rezone from mixed use to residential medium density. Approval of the tentative subdivision map is also required for this project. So on May 26, uh, 2020, the City uh, Planning Commission conducted a public hearing and after conducting the public hearing adopted resolution 020P, Dash 004 recommending city council adoption of the combined development application, which is the approval of the subdivision map with conditions, the general plan uh, amendment, the rezoning, and the uh, certification of the initial study and mitigated negative declaration. The proposed general plan amendment and zone changes uh, proposed to change the land use from a commercial use to a residential use. Staff has carefully reviewed the general plan amendment and zoning change required to determine how it relates to the specific site and affects the neighborhood and community. Uh, staff wants to be sure that any development allowed as a result of the general plan amendment and rezone will fit in with the surrounding area and support the adopted community goals. Um, it is the goal of the city to fully develop vacant underutilized land within the city uh, within the community boundary before expanding them for new development. The proposed general plan amendment is within the existing city boundaries and avoids that leapfrog development. The proposed change would result in a similar residential density, which enhances ca uh, compatibility with uses in the neighboring properties. Um, the land in which the general plan amendment is proposed is partially vacant, uh, land capable of orderly residential development. City services such as water, sewer, natural, ga natural gas, and solid waste collection are readily available by extension. And in terms of relationship to the general plan uh, land use goals and elements is to provide a high creative, high quality choices in housing and density types and a variety of neighborhoods where residents can fulfill their varied individual housing needs. Um, and then also the city shall encourage residential development projects to utilize traditional neighborhood development and other design principles to foster a sense of neighborhood uh, among residents and a sense of community. In terms of the surrounding land use setting, to the north, west, east, and south are all existing um, single family developments. So the proposed project is surrounded by residential um, and would be determined as basically infill development. Uh, the proposed project includes three existing and two future single family residential home sites to be developed at a future date on the five point, on the 0.57 acres um, resulting in a development density of eight dwelling units per acre, which is consistent with the residential medium density designation of five to 15 units per acre. Um, in terms of the administrative site plan review, according to section 9-6402, a site plan review is required for all residential development projects within the city. And with the fact that it's uh, within the three homes, it would require an administrative site plan approval from the community development director. Um, at the time of building permit issuance for the for the two future homes. I apologize, the two homes. Um, and in order to subdivide that, we have to do a tentative subdivision map. And uh, so a tentative map will be required for all divisions of the land where land would be divided into five or more parcels. The tentative map review procedure is designed to ensure that such improvements as drainage, street alignment, uh, grade and width, sanitary facilities, conform to the uh, city regulations and policies and arranged in the best possible manner to serve the public. So the city engineer has reviewed the proposed tentative subdivision map for compliance with uh, section 9-7301 of the municipal code, including the subdivision map act, and has found that it's a substantial compliance pending the final map submittal uh, once staff has, once uh, the council has gone through the approval process. So as described in more detail, uh, we, we have determined that the proposed project is in substantial conformance with the general plan, the municipal code and applicable plans adopted by the city. It's residential development 
And uh, as I showed in the staff report, it shows what the current standards are, the required and existing standards. Um, the only uh, standard that requires a minor exception is parcel C. Uh, and that has to do with the non-conforming 10 foot front yard setback. Staff found that the approval of the tentative subdivision map would not result in furthering the non-conforming setback as the map is creating legal parcels and that no action would still leave the non-conforming setback of that legal non-conforming residence. The staff does not believe this exception will adversely affect any development or purses upon abutting properties or adversely affect to mean to impact in a substantial negative manner, uh, the economic value, abatability, uh, or enjoyment of properties. In addition, it would not result in the hazard of pedestrian and vehicular traffic. So staff feels that the approval of the tentative to subdivision map with the single non-conforming setback exception uh, would be reasonably necessary uh, to the sound development of such property and would result in a better environmental quality of the development of such property than without the exception. Uh, in terms of lighting, uh, lighting will be reviewed by the Clinton Police Department to ensure that there will be adequate lighting for public safety while also ensuring no uh, spillover lighting. Offsite lighting shall be installed per city standards as part of the offsite improvements along with the development frontage, such as curb, gutter, sidewalk. In addition, uh, in the municipal code, all outdoor walkways shall be illuminated in accordance with the requirements of section 9-4206. Uh, in terms of access, access to the proposed project will be provided by uh, uh, East Valley Street, uh, South Hackman, and Polk Street. All utilities are readily available for connection within the adjacent right-of-way. Um, all utility connections shall be shown in the final site, plan, final site plan and approved by the planning department and confirmed by the Public Works Department. On-site sto uh, storage of storm runoff is not required, therefore the development will discharge storm runoff into the existing surface system. Um, in terms of environmental clearance, so the city prepared an initial study and mitigated negative declaration in accordance with the California Environmental Quality Act. A 30-day public comment period for the initial study was circulated on April 20th and ended on May 19th. Comments were received and have been incorporated in the final document and in the resolution. So in terms of uh, staff's recommending, we're recommending approval uh, of the following project uh, because it meets or exceeds the requirements of the Clean Municipal Code in the following respect. So in terms of tentative, it meets all the findings for a tentative subdivision map general plan amendment findings as explained before and the rezone findings um, at this time uh, that would conclude my report uh, again just to reiterate the action items tonight that the council will be approving the tentative subdivision map with conditions which is resolution 3968 also a general plan amendment for mixed use for mixed use to residential medium density and then we'll also be introducing and waiving the first reading of ordinance 842 rezoning the property from mixed use commercial to residential medium density and lastly, recommend uh, that the City Council uh, certify the initial initial study and mitigated negligence declaration and mitigation monitoring program. So if there's any questions, I'd be more than happy to, to answer them. And again, this is a public hearing. Sean, this is a public hearing. Thank you. Uh, so right now we're going to open up the public hearing uh, section for anyone who would like to make any comments. Mario, do we have anyone? Nobody has messaged me about um, speaking during this public hearing. Uh, I, I would note, Mayor, I do have a couple of comments for the next item uh, to read okay. into the record. Okay. Okay. Being there's no comments, Council, uh, public hearing section is closed. Council, any comments or questions? Well, you did a lot of work on this, and I congratulate you on your work. And it took a lot to do this, Sean. So good work. Thank you, Ron. Okay, um, so what we are going to need here is approval of resolution number 3968, approving of a Kennedy subdivision map, general plan amendment, rezone, and certification of initial study, mitigated negative debt, coloration for the property located at 150 South Hackman, and inter further introduced and waived the first reading of ordinance number 842, rezoning said property from mixed use commercial to residential medium density. Do we have a motion to approve? I'll make, make a motion. motion, Adam. Okay. Okay, right. we have. Okay, Ray. Ray made the motion. Adam, you want to make a second? Sure, that that'll work. Okay. Do we have a motion and second? Roll call, please. Councilman Singleton. Aye. Councilman Atkinson. Aye. Councilwoman Stoltz. Aye. 
Mayor Pro Tem Ramsey. Aye. Mayor Lander. Aye. Our next item <clears throat> is also a public hearing. The City Council consideration and approval of a city initiated zoning text amendment number ZTA20-03 and further introducing and waiving the first reading of ordinance number 840 amending the city of Colinga's commercial cannabis regulations to permit a second retail location and establishing regulations for on-site consumption, a consumption lounge. Sean. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Council, tonight uh, staff is recommending to the City Council introduce and waive the first reading of Ordinance 840, a city-initiated zoning text amendment, amending our commercial cannabis regulations related to permitting a second retail location and establishing regulations for on-site consumption. So in March of 2020, uh, the City Council, uh, as a future agenda item, uh, recommended and directed city staff to proceed forward with the zoning text amendment to allow for a second retail cannabis facility which would include on-site consumption in the downtown district where cannabis and cannabis products may be ingested or topically applied on the premises of a local retail facility. In order to accomplish this request, the planning and zoning code must be amended through a zoning text amendment. The zoning map and zoning ordinance text may be substantially amended in two ways. Uh, one is the reclassification of the zoning applicable to a specific property, which is called rezoning. And other, the other option is changes in the permitted use of the regulations on property within particular zones, commonly known as text amendments, which is what is being considered tonight. So Article 1, Chapter 5 of the Planning and Zoning Code establishes local regulations applicable to commercial cannabis operations as may be permitted under the California Medicinal and Adult Use Cannabis Regulation and Safety Act, approved by the governor on June, in June of 2017 or subsequently enacted state law pertaining to the same. The proposed zoning text amendment will allow for a second retail cannabis location in the city's downtown overlay district and further permit on-site consumption, a consumption lounge where cannabis can be vaped, smoked, ingested, or topically applied. This would be consistent with the Business and Professions Code 26200G, which allows for on-site consumption on the premise of a state licensed cannabis retailer. On June 9, 2020, the Planning Commission conducted a public hearing and received public comment and then approved resolution 020P-006 recommending approval of ordinance 840 by the city council. Some of the comments uh, were in favor of a text amendment and others were related to product movement, restrictions on the sale of plants or seeds and questions about separating the consumption area from the retail area. The proposed zoning text amendment will do the following. Amend section 9-2.302 to identify the permitted number of retail facilities in the city's downtown overlay district, including provisions for on-site consumption. Amend the definition section of the planning and zoning code related to retail cannabis to include consumption lounges and cafes. Changes to the retail cannabis regulations, which is section 9-2.129 to coincide with the permitted uses. A copy of the ordinance number 840, including the definition of a consumption lounge is attached for the council's review and consideration. In terms of general plan and zoning consistency, the proposed zoning text amendment is consistent with the general plan policies and implementation measures, including zoning consistency for commercial cannabis operations. The intent of the clinic commercial cannabis regulations were to implement state laws that relate to regulating cannabis and cannabis products. The proposed changes in the regulations to permit a second facility in the city and permit on-site consumption would not be contrary to state law. The state of California has established regulations for permitting on-site consumption which have been incorporated into the ordinance language. On June 8, uh, 2020, public hearing notices were posted at multiple public locations and emailed to the local paper in accordance with state and local law. The text amendment has been reviewed in accordance with the California Environmental Quality Act and staff has determined that this ordinance change would not have a detrimental effect to the health, safety and welfare of the community and fall under 15061 of the general rule exception. In addition, CEQA will further be reviewed during the permitting process of subsequent permits as a conditional use permit is required for both the retail cannabis license as well as on-site consumption. So lastly, when looking at the standards and the standard findings when uh, determining the zoning ordinance uh, amendment is that the proposed zoning ordinance amendment would not be detrimental to the public interest, health, safety, convenience, and welfare of the city. The ordinance amendment is consistent and compatible with the goals, policies, and actions of the general plan and other applicable provisions of the zoning ordinance. And if applicable, uh, the site is physically suitable 
uh, for the requested zoning designations and anticipated land use developments. And lastly, the proposed zoning ordinance amendment has been processed in accordance with the applicable provisions of the California uh, Government Code and Environmental Quality Act. So that will conclude my report. Um, a copy of the ordinance has been attached. So if you have any questions regarding the ordinance or the report, uh, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Okay, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the public who would like to comment on this issue? Mario? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, nothing uh, yet from the webinar, but the two comments um, that we received earlier from the city clerk, I'll, I'll read those now. Okay, thank you. Uh, the first comment, uh, Begins. Hi, my name is Linda Boomer. I am commenting in regard to item two, a permit for a second cannabis retail location with an on-site consumption lounge. As a retired teacher and grandmother, I am against a second retail location and absolutely against an on-site consumption lounge. I do want to thank our council members, Ray Singleton and Ron Landers, for voting no on this proposal. Our town is known for an SVP facility, a prison, and now marijuana. I want our town to be known for a safe town in which we can raise our families where children can walk downtown and do not have to pass by businesses that sell cannabis and even allow on-site consumption of cannabis. The proposed site is right across the street from our public library where students go after school and the site would be just a few blocks from our schools that are designated as drug-free zones. What kind of example is this for our youth? When the first retail site came up for a vote, I voted no because I knew it would be an open door to more marijuana facilities and that is exactly what has happened. I believe we now have five cannabis related businesses in our town. At the last meeting, one of the council persons stated that the town had voted for one retail cannabis business and the people of Kalinga would not, would not have a problem with having a second retail store. Just because some citizens voted for one retail store does not mean they want to continue to allow more cannabis related businesses to come to our city. I know the city council says it will bring in needed money, but that was the argument for the prison and the mental health facility for sexually violent predators and all these cannabis businesses. Please vote no on this issue. Let's bring businesses that let people know we are a town that is family friendly. Thank you for letting me comment. Uh, the second uh, comment we received was by Shelley Ross. Dear members of the Kalinga City Council, I have been a citizen of Kalinga now for 34 years. I taught for 30 years for our schools where we have overwhelmingly stressed and taught that we are a no drug zone community. I have been proud of our community until recently. I am disappointed in our city in our council in voting in another cannabis business, which will include a lounge for smoking. You spoke last meeting about how you want to be known throughout the valley for being a leader in the cannabis lounge business. We would become famous, you said. I don't want Kalinga to become famous for cannabis. I don't want to be famous for prisons. I want Kalinga to be famous for family-oriented businesses and activities and parks. Why are we compromising our beliefs and desires for our kids for revenue alone? You are being hypocritical by voting in more cannabis businesses and yet teaching kids to just say no. Yes, Kalinga voted in one retail business for cannabis of which I did not vote for. Now you wanna add more without our consent. One of you stated that we wouldn't mind because we already voted in one. You, you were sure we would be comfortable with it. Nope, I'm not. Kids will actually be walking downtown to get their lunches only, only to smell the disgusting aroma of weed. How does that help them? It actually encourages them to want to use and to go there when they get of age. By agreeing to this ordinance, you are failing us as a community of families. Why would any new family want to live in a community where the downtown has two cannabis retail businesses, one of being a weed lounge, a smoke shop, a bar, a welfare building? I am praying for God's wisdom and and godly strategies for each of you tonight and the weeks to come. Please don't compromise us for revenue. I know you are trying to save Kalinga, but there must be other ways. I want a drug-free community. I don't want to add to it. Thank you for your time, Shelly Ross. And that is the last comment that I have. There are no further comments. Okay, thank you. Okay, the public section, public hearing <clears throat> section is closed. Council, questions, comments? <clears throat> Uh, on those two statements, that's Ron Ramsey. This is Ron Ramsey. On the two statements about the prison hasn't brought any money in and uh, the sexually violent predator place hasn't brought any money in, if, if we wouldn't have brought those in, nobody would actually live here, I don't think, except for the people that are in the schools right now. 
the, the school teachers. I mean, we wouldn't have any kids in the school. All the uh, oil companies are leaving right now. I mean, I'm, I'm for uh, positive business, but right now we need some money in this town, and that, that's why I'm going for it. I'm not a user of this stuff myself, but it, it does uh, take money to run a city. And we, we wouldn't have any money if we do, wouldn't have brought in the prison. I don't know what, where we would be right now if we didn't have the prison and uh, the state hospital. We wouldn't have anybody living here at all. I know a lot of them live in Hanford and uh, uh, Lemoore areas, but we did get at least 30%, and that 30% did help us a lot. So I'm uh, with that, I'm, I'm going to... Uh, we recommend that we uh, introduce and waive the first reading of this ordinance 840 and, and initiate the zoning tax and amend the commercial uh, stuff. Well, if, if you left somebody else want to Right, talk. before we do that, we, we, anybody else on the council want to make any comments or have any questions? Yeah, um, this is Ray. I have a, a comment question. As it reads, it states now no more than two. Now, the questions the citizens are asking, will it continue to go up every time they want to add one to it when the initial agreement was one? I mean, so it's like you tell them that they are part of it, but then you take them out of the equation. When you go and add more to it, they have no say-so in that because it falls back on the city. And I understand you want to generate revenue and you kind of want to be the first one, but at the same point, the citizens aren't being heard on what they would exact in. And when I ran for city council, that was my thing. I will speak for the citizens for the city, and this is not what uh, they're looking into. And as for me, I will still not, not rather see that come to the city, uh, the, the smoking lounge. Is there any other comments? <clears throat> I'll, I'll comment. I can't, I'm going to kind of go off of what Ron Ramsey said. Um, we need businesses to come here. Look, look at what's going on with our economy and everything else. We should not be in the in the business, I guess you would say, of preventing businesses from coming here. Look at the proposed building. How long has that building been empty? It's been empty pretty much ever since I moved to Coinga. Um, let's talk about revenue from cannabis businesses. Where would we be right now without revenue from these cannabis businesses? We would be talking about who do we want to get rid of? Do we want to get rid of the police department or do we want to get rid of the fire department? Because we can't afford both. There's no other city of our size who has both of those. So these are the questions that we are going to have to come up if we don't generate some revenue in this town. Uh, sure, Measure J helps. Measure J is just a Band-Aid, just so we're clear. Measure J is simply a Band-Aid for 10 years. That's it. It's trying to help us get through it and generate more revenue. Now, also, this is going to be... <laughs> This is going to be everywhere in, in California, whether we want to agree with it or not. You you can be against it, I understand, or we can be out in front of it because it's going to come here eventually, no matter what, and try and regulate it and, and have it meet our standards. This won't be any different than bars five to ten years from now. These will be thought of the exact same way as, as bars are thought of now. We walk by and don't even think about it. You don't have a second thought about it. So. I want to continue to see Kalinga grow, bring in businesses, not try and stop them, and generate more revenue. We need a police department. We need a fire department. They don't pay for themselves. They're not free. And we're having, you know, teachers being laid off, or at least they're talking about it. I don't know what the final decision was, up to 100 staff. We're going to have college staff laid off. We're going to be hurt. We need to generate some revenue because this town is going to be hurting probably this time next year when we're talking about the budget again. Any other comments? <clears throat> Thank you, Adam. Any other comments? Seeing none. So um, we need to have city council consideration and approval of a city initiated zoning text amendment number ZTA 20-03 and further introducing and waiving the first reading of ordinance number 840 amending the City of Colinga's commercial cannabis regulations to permit a second retail location and establishing regulations for on-site consumption, consumption lounge. Do we have a motion for approval? 
I make the motion. We have a, a motion by Ron Ramsey. Do we have a second? I second. I'll second. We have a Give second by Tanya, by Tanya Stoltz. May I have roll call, please? Mayor Pro Tim Ramsey. Aye. Councilwoman Stoltz. Aye. Councilman Singleton. No. Councilman Atkinson. Aye. Mayor Lander. No. Okay, our next item <clears throat> is uh, item three, city council consideration and approval of a city initiated zoning text amendment number ZTA20-04 and further introducing and waiving the first reading of ordinance number 841 amending the commercial cannabis regulations related to establishing regulations for permitting outdoor cannabis cultivation. Sean. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I will uh, not read what the mayor just read, so we can save you that. Um, so in May <laughs> of 2020, <laughs> Uh, the City Council directed staff to proceed with a, a text amendment to establish regulations for permitting outdoor cannabis cultivation. So as we go through this, it's the same process as we did on the previous item as a zoning text amendment to amend these regulations. Um, what it will, what, and so on June 9th, uh, staff prepared reports and brought forward to the commission, the planning commission and conducted a public hearing uh, to adopt resolution 020P-007, which is recommending to the city council approval of ordinance 841. So the proposed zoning text amendment will do the following. Uh, it'll amend 9-5.128 and establish a definition for outdoor cultivation, identify permitted uses, create specific regulations for outdoor cultivation as to distance from residential uses, security, and processing of products. Staff has provided a copy of the ordinance for the council's review that was approved and recommended uh, that even includes uh, changes that were uh, attached for the, um, attached by the uh, commission. The proposed zoning tax amendment is consistent with the general plan policies and implementation measures, including zoning consistency for commercial cannabis operations. The intent of the commercial cannabis regulations were to implement state law as it relates to regulating commercial cannabis and cannabis product, uh, uh, products. The proposed changes and regulations to permit outdoor cultivation would not be contrary to state law. Um, the state of California has established strict regulations for licensing outdoor cultivation operations. Uh, the ordinance amendment uh, will permit outdoor cultivations in the manufacturing and business light district, which is consistent with all other cannabis uh, locations or cannabis businesses with a one mile distance from residential zoning designations. This will help in limiting the overall con concentration of cannabis outdoor cultivation in the city and limit odor and visibility. On June 8, 2020, public hearing notices were posted at multiple public locations and emailed to the local paper in accordance with the local and state regulations. And in accordance, uh, this, this text amendment was processed in accordance with the California Environmental Quality Act and will fall under the general rule exception. Uh, CEQA will further be reviewed during the permitting process as a conditional use permit will be required for any outdoor cultivation operation. So as we discussed previously, the following findings must be made for each zoning ordinance amendment and that the, the amendment would not be detrimental to the public interest, health, safety, convenience, and welfare of the city, that the ordinance amendment is consistent and compatible with the goals, policies, and actions of the general plan, other applicable provisions of the zoning ordinance, and if applicable, the site is physically suitable, including but not limited to access, utilities, adjoining properties, and the absence of physical constraint for the requested zoning designations and anticipated land use development. And the proposed zoning ordinance amendment has been processed in accordance with the applicable provisions of the California Government Code and the California Environmental Quality Act. So, Mayor, that will conclude my report. Um, there is a copy of the ordinance uh, in the report. So, if you have any questions regarding the language in the, in the ordinance, uh, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. And, again, this is a public hearing. Thank you, Sean. It's a public hearing. So, is there anyone in the public who would like to comment on that? Mario? I have no request for public comment. Okay. Um, 
then the public hearing section is closed. Council, any questions or comments? No questions or comments from the council? Ray has one. Uh, uh, this is Ray. And this one, you know, I'm okay with this one. The citizens are okay with this one because of the location. It's not, uh, so they say, in their backyard. And this is a definite positive revenue for us, a whole hundred percent. So this one, uh, the citizens I spoke to are definitely on board with this one. Any other comments or questions? Do we have a motion to um, consider and approve a city initiated zoning text amendment number ZTA 20-04 and further introduce and waive the first reading of ordinance number 841 amending the commercial cannabis regulations related to establishing regulations for permitting outdoor cannabis cultivation? I'll make the motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Adam will second. Oh, whatever. Either one. We have a motion and a second. May I have a roll call, please? Councilman Singleton? Aye. Councilman Atkinson? Or excuse me, Aye. Councilman Stoltz. Um, Sorry, I think we have. Thank you. <laughs> Councilman Atkinson? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Ramsey? Aye. And Mayor Lander? I vote aye on that issue. Okay, thank you. All right, our next item, <clears throat> excuse me, is the consent calendar. We have 22 items. I'm going to read every one of them. It's approved the minutes of April 2nd, 2020, which is amended. Approved the minutes of April 16th, 2020. Check register of April 1st, 2020 through April 30th, 2020. Item 4 is Council Adoption of Resolution Number 3973, approving and authorizing a pay adjustment for the Colinga Planning Commission. Item 5 is declare all police radios as surplus and approve disposal. Item 6 is adopt resolution number 3977, amending the public utilities coordinator job description. Item 7 is adopt resolution number 3978, amending the general pay scale. Item 8 is adopt resolution number 3975, adjusting the compensation for city treasurer. Item 9 is adopt resolution 3976, calling for a municipal election to submit to the voters a local ballot measure transitioning the office of the city treasurer from an elected position to an appointed position. Item 10 is adopt resolution number 3979, calling for a municipal election to submit to the voters a local ballot measure transitioning the office of the city clerk from an elected position to an appointed position. Item 11 is adopt resolution number 3972, requesting the Board of Supervisors of the County of Fresno to consolidate and canvass the election and permit the County Clerk of Fresno County to render specified services to the City of Coinga relating to the conduct of the municipal election to be held in the City of Coinga on November 3rd, 2020, and appropriate funds to pay for said services. Item 12 is adopt resolution number 3969, adopting the budget for fiscal year 2020-21. Item 13 is adopt resolution number PFA 20-01, adopting the budget for fiscal year 2020-21. Item 14 is adopt resolution number SA335, adopting the budget for fiscal year 2020-21. Item 15 is adopt resolution number 3970, annual GAN appropriate limit for fiscal year 2020-21. Item 16 is adopt resolution number 3971, fiscal year 2020-21, continuing budget resolution for July 2020. Item 17 is adopt resolution number PFA 20-02, fiscal year 2020-21, continuing budget resolution for July 2020. Item 18 is adopt resolution number SA336, fiscal year 2020 through 2021, continuing budget budget resolution for July 2020. Item 19 is approve award for the City Hall Roof Silicone Restoration Roof Project. Item 20 is approve reopening of City Parks. Item 21, Council Consideration and Approval of Resolution Number 3974, authorizing the submission of an application for the Local Early Action Planning LEAP program, grant program, 
to support the development of the City of Coalinga Cottage Home Program. And item 22, Public Works and Utilities Monthly Report for May 2020. Is there any items that you would like to pull or discuss? Ron? I would like to uh, pull four, eight, nine, and 10. Okay. Pull, pull, pull. Okay, any others? Um, <clears throat> this is Adam. I'll pull five. Okay. Five. And Twelve. And 12. Okay. I'm marking you guys' initials on this, so I'll know who did. Okay. Is there any others? Okay. Ron, go ahead. Okay. Um, number four. Number four, that's the authorized and the pay adjustment for the Planning Commission. Um, I was thinking about that, and, and I thought if, if we were going to uh, take their pay away, um, we should take ours away, too. So. I'm as of right now. I'm just saying, uh, give it back to them. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna vote that way. So I, don't, I don't know how anybody else will will go on that. So, and that is, you want to keep? You're saying keep their pay. The, the, yeah, I want to keep their pay. Keep the keep the stipend for the planning commission. Yes, I do. Okay. Council, this is Marissa. I just want to uh, make sure everyone's aware. So the cut to the pay was the consensus of the council in the budget workshop. So the pay has already been removed from uh, next fiscal year for planning commission. So if it remains, then it will be an unbudgeted expense. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments on that issue? Okay. Okay. Do I go to number seven? Is that no number eight for me? Oh, number eight. Okay. And uh, on the same with the compensation for the uh, treasurer, I'm going to go ahead. I want to keep that too. I'm going to vote to keep it. I'm just letting everybody know. Okay. And again, that would be the same thing. So the consensus of the council during the budget workshop was to remove it. So it is not budgeted. It's um, right. budgeted through the remainder of the term. So um, it's budgeted through December for health insurance and. Um, a stipend, and then starting in January, it would be unbudgeted. Okay. Marissa, how much does that add to the deficit? Um, that would be, let me do it on my calculator real quick. So for the treasure item, it would be about an additional $7,000. Another how much, sorry? 7000 Seven and, and for the planning commission. Yeah. Planning commission planning is six thousand, right? It's up to six thousand because they um oh, okay. receive right. a stipend of fifty dollars per meeting. So if they don't meet twice a month, then it's a little less than that. Okay. So approximately thirteen thousand dollars added to the deficit. Probably Correct. twelve to thirteen. Okay. Any other uh number nine? Number nine. Um, and I'm going to vote for keep it as elected. We had this problem uh, a couple of years ago too, and uh, uh, we had all kinds of people wanting to keep it, so that's why we kept it in those days too. So I'm going to just vote to keep it. I'm just letting everybody know on that too. Okay. Any other questions on that or comments? No. Um, I have a go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Tony. Um, my question was going to be if we, uh, if that gets voted to keep, then what is going to happen to the next item, which is 10, because we did the exact thing with the city clerk before. And obviously we shouldn't have because now it's on the consent calendar for us to address. So, well, 10 is my next one. I was going to bring that up as number 10. Okay, go ahead. I was going to bring the same thing up, and I was going to keep the city clerk. So, Can we go back? Um, and, oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to clarify on item 10. So previously, we haven't had anyone run for election for city clerk since the year 2000. So the council has been appointing because no one ran for election. And so um, 
I don't remember if it was last fiscal year, maybe this fiscal year before that, um, there was someone appointed in that position. And so that appointment uh, ended and the um, assistant to the city manager was fulfilling that role as a budgetary savings. And so if you decide to um, have it become elected again and uh, someone runs for it, that would be an additional cost to the city that's not budgeted. It wasn't budgeted the current fiscal year that we're in because it's been appointed and it would have to, it, it would be a potential expense if someone ran for that position. Okay, what if we just keep it the way it is right now then? Then you would need to approve that item. You would need to approve item 10 in order to keep it that way because you have to allow the voters to vote to remove the position. Okay. as being elected okay then so this, this other, didn't have I, to be done at the time that it happened because that there was no one elected there was no one in a term so that's why it didn't need to be done then but now that it's come up and that um someone could potentially run for it you would need to decide if you want someone to be able to run for it you could allow someone to run for election and you could make it a zero cost if you wanted to or you could keep it the way it is if you okay. want to keep it the way it is, you would need to pass the item. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay. Okay. Adam, you had number, uh, uh, number five. I was wondering if we, yeah, I was wondering if we go back to number eight real quick. Compensation okay. for the city treasurer. Okay. What do we pay the city treasurer now? The same as what council members make? That is 300? correct. Yes. Well, can we agree to go down to 100? I don't can we put it personally the same I don't how about putting the same as the planning commission okay I'm fine with that and you um, have to do that at the term when that term ends correct right yeah, it, it would, would have to be after the term ends. and and it would sorry become effective. And, pardon me sorry I was speaking at the same time as Adam go ahead um and take away uh health benefits for that position after this uh, current term is over. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any other? Or you had number, Adam, you had number 12? Five and 12. Five and 12. Oh. Yeah, I had a uh, yeah. number, number five. five was, oh, um, is police chief on here? Yes, I'm here. Hey, Darren. Also, is the fire Hi. chief on here too? I believe both of them may be on the call. I'm here. This yeah. is Greg. Okay. Um, the previous fire chief was able to find a website for surplus uh, government um, uh, equipment. We actually ended up selling our ambulances on there for a lot more than we, we had originally thought we would get. Is there any way that we can try that first, uh, Chief Levins? I don't know what the website is because uh, the Chief Dwayne told me about it. Um, Maybe we can try that first. It's gov.com, and yes, we can try that. Okay. All right. That's all I got for that one. Okay. And then number 12? Uh, number 12. Oh, number 12 is the budget. Um, I've, you already know what I'm going to say. Uh, I don't think we should go back into debt. I think there's plenty of more places where we can cut uh, spending from. Uh, going back to the debt, I think our debt is going to be a lot more than what we're expecting it to be. I think we're heavily reliant on the cannabis to bring in and help us close that gap for the debt. I would be shocked if we actually see planting done in September. And uh, I, I think it's very dangerous to go down this road. That's all I have to say about that one. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, ask for adoption of uh, approval rather of the consent counter with the exception of four, five, eight, nine, I've got this messed up, eight, nine, ten, and twelve. Anyway, I'm going to do those separately for the benefit of the chair, for our clerk, so that she will know exactly what's going on. So, before we do that, the rest of the consent calendar, we have a motion for approval. Mayor? This is Marissa. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Can you do the individual items first only because if 12 does not pass, 
then 16, 17, and 18 will need to be approved. But okay. to do it, reverse 16, 17, and 18 get approved without needing to be if 12 passes. Okay. So do we have a motion for approval of resolution item number four, resolution number 3973, approving and authorizing a pay adjustment for the Kalinga Planning Commission? Do we have a motion for approval? Once again, uh, do we have a motion for approval of resolution number 3973? That motion has failed for lack of a motion. Okay, number five, declare old police radios as surplus and approve disposal. Do we have a motion for approval? Is that with the, uh, with that deal that you'll go to? Yes. Uh, Website first? Yes, to look into that, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll make the motion. Okay. Sorry, Ron. We have a motion by uh, Adam and a second by Ron Ramsey. Councilman Atkinson? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Ramsey? Aye. Councilman Singleton? Aye. Councilwoman Stoltz? Aye. Mayor Lander? Aye. Okay, item eight is adopt. Resolution number 3975, adjusting the compensation for city treasurer. Do we have a motion for approval? Uh, is that also uh, with the stipulation that we put it the same as the planning commission? Right, you would that? need to make that motion. So right now, the way that the item is written, it's a stipend of zero without health benefits at the end of the current term. So um, you would just need to uh, make a motion to approve with amending it to, instead of being a $0 stipend, be $50 per meeting with no health insurance right. at the end of the current treasurer's term. So you adopt the resolution with amendments. Okay, yes, I'll do that. We have a motion by Ron Ramsey. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second by Ray. May I have roll call, please? Mayor Perkin. Councilman Singleton? Aye. Councilman Atkinson? Aye. Councilman Stoltz? Aye. Mayor Lander? Aye. Number nine, adopt resolution number 3976, calling for a municipal election to submit to the voters a local ballot measure transitioning the office of the city treasurer from an elected position to an appointed position. Do we have a motion for approval? Once again, do we have an a motion for approval to adopt resolution number 3976? Seeing no motion, that motion has, that resolution has failed. Item number 10 is adopt resolution number 3979 calling for a municipal election to submit to the voters a local ballot measure transitioning the office of the city clerk from an elected position to an appointed position. Do we have a motion for approval? Also moved. We have a motion. Do you have a second? That way, second. Question, question before any question. Okay. Now, Marissa, if we do it, yes. we're gonna, that's keeping it the way it is right now then. It's that separate. is correct. Okay. okay. So that is correct. And so you had already adjusted the um, pay for the city clerk to zero without uh, health insurance by ordinance. And so if you do not approve this item, someone could run for the position of city clerk um, during the election, but there wouldn't be any pay associated with it. So in order to, if you approve this item, it basically keeps things the way they are. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, so we had a motion. Do we have a second? A second. We have a second. May I have roll call? Mayor Ramsey. I'm sorry, somebody say something. Oh, I, I had already seconded it, but that's okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem Ramsey. Aye. Councilman Singleton. Aye. Councilman Atkinson. Aye. Councilman Stoltz. Yeah. Mayor Lander. All right. Okay, and then item 12 is adopt resolution number 3969, adopting a budget for fiscal year 2020-2021. We have a motion for approval. 
So moved. So we have a motion by Ron Ramsey. Do we have a second? We have a motion. Do we have a second? That motion has failed for lack of a second. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the rest of the consent calendar. Do we have a motion for approval of the remaining part of the consent calendar? Excuse me, Mayor. I think um, because item number 12 didn't pass, 13 and 14 will uh, not get passed. Also, 13 is for the PFA and 14 is for the successor agency, and it's the same budget item. Okay. So, all right. So then that that has failed. 13, 14, and 15 will not be included in that. Correct. Sorry. Yeah. 12, 13, 14, and then. Uh, also 15, yes. Okay. And okay. Um, council on that, um, having a budget isn't really optional, like we have to have one. So as staff, we're gonna need direction for what you want to see in the budget to be brought back to you because the budget that was on here for consideration was based on the direction from the council at the last budget workshop. So in order for us to bring you back something different, we are gonna need direction on what you would like that to look like. Okay. Okay, we will. Is it agreeable where each council member could contact the city manager and um, give her the ideas as to what how we can cut? Is that agreeable with everyone? Well, we'll need to have a special meeting. Okay, all right, we can do that. Is that agreeable with everyone? Agreeable. Yes. Okay, yeah. all right, we'll, we'll get that set up. Okay, so. We need to approve consent calendar with the exceptions, correct me if I'm wrong now, 12, 13, and 14, and 15, correct? Yes. Okay, so do we have a motion? So moved. Motion. Adam. We have a motion and we have a second. Adam, you wanna do the second? Sure, I'll do the second. Okay, thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Ramsey? Aye. Councilman Atkinson? Aye. Councilman Singleton? Aye. Councilwoman Stoltz? Aye. Mayor Lander? Aye. Okay, our next item um, is item six, ordinance presentation, discussion, and potential action items. Item one is discussion and direction, no, discussion, direction, and potential action regarding online city council meeting alternatives. Larry Miller. Well, as a Sean, I'll I'll take this item. Um, okay, Sean. Tonight, there's no staff rec there's no staff recommendation. This is just an item requested uh, by Councilman Atkinson. Um, so due to the current COVID pandemic, council meetings have been um, had to be broadcasted from an online environment. Uh, currently, the City of Kalinga uses uh, Big Marker Webinar. Uh, the City Attorney's Office makes this avenue available and moderates the meetings with the services. And uh, due to some citizens have expressed some concerns about difficulties in utilizing this program. So it was requested that we uh, kind of review a couple of options um, in terms of being able to uh, disseminate information on, in this format. And there's a large variety of options uh, to accomplish this. Uh, some, most are very similar. Uh, and then the concern of the, the ease and use of and implementation is what the concern seems to be. Um, staff has researched different alternatives and found that Zoom webinar would be the easiest solution uh, to move to, although the city would need then to train, um, essentially train the city clerk in use of the system, which would add to her existing duties of taking meeting minutes. So the two options that we provided uh, was basically one is the one we're currently using, which is Big Marker. No cost to the city to host this service is provided by the city attorney's office, and they also serve as the moderator. And then there's also the Zoom, uh, which is the pro plan with the webinar feature, which would allow to have up to 100 to 10,000 participants based on cost. Uh, there's a Q&A section, host controls, audio, video recording, and other basic functions. Essentially, both of these, uh, according to Larry, both of these, these systems work uh, pretty similar um, in terms of their, uh, their mobility. Um, the Zoom webinar with 100 participants and the webinar function will cost about $154, $155 a month. Um, if you wish to have more potential participants, the next step would be $500 at a cost of $254 a month. 
Uh, and this obviously is not budgeted at this time um, and then would be a general fund expense. So that's just kind of a, the report that was provided. If you have any questions, um, either myself or Marissa can answer those for you. Council, any questions? Mayor, I'm sorry, this is the city attorney. Just one comment um, has come in uh, from Mary Jones. Her comment was the necessary functions are available on Zoom for no cost except for the length of the meeting. That's all the public comments we have. Okay. Council? That's correct. We wouldn't be able to use the, the free version as an option. Okay. Any other? Uh, I just want to say that Adam, go ahead. I, think, I think we all know that we're having lots of difficulty with this platform. It doesn't seem to be working for us very good. Um, I know all of our surrounding cities are not using something like this. They're using mainly Zoom, and they're able to have a lot better results with the public interaction and also interaction between each other. Um, even when we hear the recording of this, it's very difficult to hear what's going on, especially last meeting. It was just awful. Um, I don't think this works for us very well. I would like us to move into something better. I mean, like I tell people, it's like we're using 20th century technology for a 21st century world. I think uh, we're better than this, and I think we can have a lot better participation. It'll be a lot more open to the people, and I think that's what they want as well. Because even today, I've gotten uh, two messages already of people who can't get on. Anyone else? Have to Anyone else? Yeah, I have a comment. This is Tanya. Um, okay. So we have a budget running in the deficit that is continually pointed out to us. We just had Adam do the math and say that we're going to be an additional 13 in the whole unbudgeted because everyone's electing to keep these other positions in pay. And now you want to even spend some more on this platform? Yes. And the reason I don't, why I don't, I, I don't, I'm not been talking. And so I don't understand that because we're in the hole and we have to penny pinch and cut where we can. So we just, are spending upwards of more than 13 grand on unbudgeted because we did, as the city manager said, it was a consensus in the budget meeting that those other items be cut. And now that we're in a meeting, we didn't cut them, which then throws that back on the city to, to figure out something else with our guidance. And now we're, we're going to spend money on Zoom. I also have gotten a few complaints of people not being able to get on, but then they figured it out. So I think that it might be a more of a user issue than a platform issue. I, I don't know. I'm not a tech person, but that's just my thoughts on it. So I vote no on spending money on a platform when our city attorney's office provides that service to us with what we pay him. Okay. Any other? Thank you. Yeah. Uh Having public interaction and participation is what we're doing it for, not because of the money. And that is not want to say priceless, but that is something that they deserve. And that is their right. It's their right to be able to participate in our meetings. And if it costs us $154, I mean, how, how much longer are we really going to be meeting like this? Hopefully not much longer. But it's their right. They have it by right to participate in our meetings. And when they can't hear what's going on, when they can't see what's going on, and when they can't participate, we're, we're denying them their rights. Any other comments or questions? How, how much was the Zoom going to cost us, did you guys say? Anybody? The 154. 154. 154.99 a month. Yes. And if, if you wish to have more partic potential participants, the next step is 500 and the cost will raise up to $254.99. I think the so, my, okay. uh, I have another question. Yes. Um, so are the city iPads capable of everyone jumping on Zoom and also looking at the agenda and everything else that we need to do when we're not face-to-face? -face? I I don't think it is, is it? They, so how they are we going to get that equipment? They have they cameras. Do have, 
you have to download oh, that. it depends if you guys want to do video i mean i think that the the big marker actually has video options as well um mario correct me if i'm wrong but it does have very very similar uh options that uh, zoom does um we've been using it more on on the uh audio platform but i think there is a full video platform correct yes yeah, so um all of the presenters and even um i mean we've had video presenters uh casey i think was on in her legal counsel um the first time they connected um by video um I beat. Even they had problems getting on. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. We're having presenters come to us who are presenting us with information, and they can't get on. She had a horrendous time trying to get on. William Bordeaux couldn't get on. It took him, I don't know how many minutes. He, he told me how many minutes, but he, he, it's embarrassing when we have to see these people, and they tell us how awful our meetings are. So what is the general consensus? Because... Uh... This is just a direction and potential action item. Um, do I need a, uh, Mara, do I need to do a vote on this or just a general consensus? Um, yeah, so, you, well, we'd have to, we, Marissa, do you have, you have spending authority within that, right? And uh, within the, the cost? I mean, even if we did it for a year, that would be, that would be within Correct. your authority. Uh, yeah. yeah, so just general consensus. Um, I do have another comment from Mary Jones. Okay. Um, she said for two thousand dollars for the year we can have a platform that meets the community's needs um i think that's in relation to zoom okay thank you okay so what is the general consensus well i'm going to ask uh, what do you guys want to do how about we spend a uh, wait somebody said wait hello Okay, I think it was Ron Ramsey. Ron Ramsey. Okay, <laughs> it's like okay, what? <laughs> what, I, what I was going to say is, uh, could we go ahead and uh, try it one time, see how it works, and do the um, um, the audio and 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 see what the difference in the price is in the audio and the video video, uh, video but do the audio, and then maybe later we could uh, do the do the other one, but just try it one time. Just to see if we like it. So someone who is technically challenged, which is me, can I do that on my phone or what? You can do uh, Zoom. You can do you can do Zoom and Big Marker on your phone. Okay. I mean, I did. Uh, the council of governments did Zoom, and uh, they had a little bit of issues with it. Um, Unfortunately, I it didn't work for me, so I just used my regular phone like we're doing right now, which worked just fine. But uh, it seemed like they were happy with it. I don't know. Do we even have a plan or a tentative questionable date when we can have regular mass covered city council meetings? I mean, or is that just not even in the thought yet? Or So um, you can do that whenever you want to do that. There's just a risk associated with that. And my only fear is um, this uh, additional time that employees can take off. And so if we have a potential exposure during a council meeting and then city hall is shut down for two weeks, then we can't even provide basic essential services to the public. So you can do it anytime you want. And that's really my only concern is we need to be able to turn off people's water and turn off their water and help them with at least the bare necessities and if all of city hall had to shut down for two weeks then we wouldn't be able to even do you know the bare minimum that people need as a necessity so could i make a suggestion could everybody be agreeable that we try it for um, for next month to see how it goes and then that way maybe we'll have a clearer view as to what's going on with this covid situation is that agreeable to everyone? Try what? I, I, uh, the Zoom. The Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Is that agreeable with yeah. everyone? Yeah. That's for me, try. Adam. Yes. Go ahead, Adam. Oh, I said yeah. I that's agreeable. Okay. Is that Ron? Yeah, that's agreeable. Ray. Yes. Okay. So there, there. Let's try it for the next, the next month with the meetings and, until we get a uh, Tanya. Are you agreeable? 
I, well, it doesn't matter if I am or not because it's already four votes. So. Well, we want your input. I already gave my input. Okay. My other question is, how is this going to expand the duties of the city clerk with what she already does with minutes? And since we know that the minutes have been late a lot because she's overtasked. Well, she yeah, can't right here. I'm going to ask her. <laughs> Go ahead, Shannon. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it, but um, I am afraid <laughs> of, of the additional duties and trying to take notes and make sure I get everyone's votes down um, while I'm trying to uh, utilize the platform, I guess. I'll run it then. Uh, no. Oh, okay. Well, we'll determine what's going to happen. Anyway, if it's agreeable, let's try it for a month. Let's see what happens. I mean, we may really Sounds like good. it. Sounds good. Okay. All right, so then our next item, moving on, we'll go to our next item, is item two, which is discussion, direction, and potential action regarding reducing pay for city council members. Marissa. Thank you. So there is no staff recommendation. This item was requested as a future agenda item by Councilman Atchison. Um, he had requested the future agenda item to discuss reducing city council pay by $50 per month for fiscal year 2020-2021 which is the upcoming fiscal year. Um, if approved, council pay would be reduced from $300 per month to $250 per month. Um, there is a government code section that prevents you from reducing pay um, for currently seated council members. So um, you can move forward as a council to vote to reduce council pay, um, but it would only impact incoming council members. Otherwise, it's something that each individual seated council member would have to decide for themselves and they would do so by going to the HR office and requesting a personnel action form to be completed. And um, it's not something that would be done um, by action of the city council. Okay, <clears throat> council, any discussion? Yeah, obviously we can't do it the way that I thought we could. Um, it would have to be voluntary if everyone else is voluntary. If everyone else will volunteer, to take a $50 pay cut for a year, or at least until we're out of debt, then I will too, um, voluntarily. Rob, anybody? Well, I'm. if I do that, I'll be paying $60 a month to be on the city council, so um, I'm actually not going to do that. Anybody else? Marissa, can you cover again what we voted on for the treasurer pay and um, planning commission and all that? Yes. So um, planning commission pay would remain as is, and treasurer pay after the current term would go to $50 per month. Okay. Any, any other? discussion on these issues okay we're going to move on to announcements city manager you have any announcements i do um i just wanted to let everyone know they probably saw the press release that we do have a new fire chief um he is on the line so i'll let him introduce himself in just a minute but um i hope everyone had a chance to read the press release we um planned for about a four-week overlap of fire chiefs so that Dwayne can do his best to pass along 37 years of knowledge to our new fire chief in four weeks. Um, but we are excited to have him on board. The press release does state, normally we would host and meet the chief event, but due to COVID, we're doing it via Zoom meetings and uh, that information was available in the press release. And so I just wanted to give him a minute to introduce himself to the community. Hello everyone. Good evening. Hi. That's, uh, Nice to meet you all. Well, kind of meet you all. Uh, but my name is Greg Dupuy, and uh, like Marissa said, I am the new fire chief. Uh, I come from the city of Sanger. I spent 17 years there, um, and you can read my press release to all of my um, <clears throat> education and requirements and stuff. But uh, I'm just looking looking forward to the next chapter in my life and my career, and really looking forward to uh, 
to be with the men and, men, men and women of the uh, community and the fire department and uh, looking forward to uh, getting started. So I just want to say uh, thank you and uh, hopefully get to meet all of you in, in person real soon. Welcome. We look forward to working with you. Yeah, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, council members, any announcements? Mayor, I have a question first. We did not uh, just we did not give direction for number two six point two. Uh oh, uh oh, sorry. Six point two. What's the direction? So I oh, just uh, want to uh, clarify uh, if it's it was a moot point that we can't do anything. Yeah. Well, if, if, yeah. if the councilman wants to, uh, if the council to reduce his pay, he can. Yeah. If the council right. wants to reduce his pay, he needs to go to HR and talk to HR. Is that correct, uh, Marissa? So that is correct for the sitting council. You could take action to reduce the pay for incoming council members if you would like to do that. I would prefer to wait and see where we are down the road. If that's, if that's agreeable with everyone. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, I only want to do it to help the budget. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we should bring that back at a later date, you know, as we get closer to the election or after the election. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on. Okay. Council members, did you have any announcements? Any council members? All right. Mayor's announcements. I have um, one announcement. Well, I actually have two. One announcement is the Kalinga Community Cleanup Event. And a lot of people have been asking about this. So here it is, Saturday, July 18th, 2020, from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m., and it's sponsored by Mid Valley Disposal in the City of Kalinga. It's a cleanup event only for Kalinga residents, and you must bring proof of residency and a driver's license for utility bill, and it will be held at Mid Valley Disposal Yard. And that is, again, on Saturday, July the 18th, at 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. Anyway, I will get this to the newspaper so she can get that in there. And then the other announcement is, I had announced to you about three months ago that I had been appointed to the LACO board. And unfortunately, I have had to step down from that position in view of the time that it is during the day. Uh, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. And unfortunately, well, Basically, fortunately, my business has increased substantially, and I simply cannot afford to walk away from my business to attend a meeting, which will take about three or four hours. So unfortunately, I have had to step down, and they are going to approve another member to the LAFCO board at the next council of governments meeting. It was an honor to be a, a, uh, appointed, um, but unfortunately, I had to be realistic uh, and look at the finances for my benefit. Anyway, future agenda items, anyone? Seeing none, we don't have a closed session. And so this meeting now is adjourned. Sorry, I have, a, I have an agenda item, sorry. Okay, okay. Um, I was approached by a member of the community. Uh, I won't say the name right now because I don't know if they want me to tell. Uh, they want to pay for the city to get a new ambulance. Apparently, uh, on the right of the hospital, this particular person was not impressed and it was um, very bumpy. So if we could have the fire chief look at a new <laughs> ambulance that's a lot more comfortable and they're gonna take care of that ambulance 100%. Also, um, I know we talked about uh, phone lines that were unnecessary. I think we have quite a few phone lines that are unnecessary in the city. Can we look at some phone lines and see what we can do to get rid of them because we're paying for each line every month. I know there's several we can get rid of. Uh, one of them is the graffiti hotline. Probably no one even calls that one. They can just call the city for that. Um, can we also do bids for vehicle maintenance? Um, Marissa, I know we talked about this earlier today. Um, we have uh, a couple places in town who could handle uh, our vehicle maintenance for the city vehicles. Can we see? you know, have them bid against each other and see who will do it cheapest? Yes, and I, I just so the public knows, um, 
to clarify on our conversation earlier, that's for services that our own equipment mechanic cannot perform. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Going up. Anything else? Seeing none, this meeting is now adjourned, and I thank everyone for uh, participation. And uh, you guys have a safe Fourth of July coming up. Before we close, uh, oh. uh, are we going to have a workshop for the? Uh, oh, we got to determine. We got to determine a workshop for the uh, budget. Yeah, so I'm going to have to check the calendar and availability, and I'll send an email to confirm some possible dates, and we'll get the special meeting scheduled. Um, it should be um, as soon as we can, um, but we do need to post it. So my preference would be Tuesday of next week, um, but I don't think it's best to schedule it to confirm that now without checking a few things. Um, but ideally, if we could aim for Tuesday of next week, because we need to do it sooner rather than later. Okay, perfect. Is that good with everyone? If it works? Yes. Yeah. It is for me. Ron? Tuesday. Um, I've got doctor's appointments that day, and so I don't know what time I'll be out of the doctor's appointment. It'll probably be towards the evening, wouldn't you think, Marissa? I hope. Uh, yeah, I believe the earliest that we can have anything is around 3 p.m. due to Councilman Singleton's schedule, correct? So it would, if you want to do evening, we can do evening, or we could do late afternoon, whatever council I'd prefer prefers. to do evening. <laughs> 2 o'clock, I'm pretty darn busy sometimes. My schedule's open. Anyway, put some things together for us and, and uh, email us out. Let us know. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Okay.